the United States has a population of north of 327 million people. Why do we need more kids? I mean, your party, Senator Tuberville, is the one screaming that 10 million immigrants, which I don't even know that that number even makes any sense because it doesn't, um, have streamed into the country since Joe Biden has been president. And you're claiming that that's too many people, that if more people come into the southern border, this is some sort of crisis because we, we've got too many people and we've got no more space and we can't afford more people. But now you're saying we need more kids. Can you explain who's the we and what's the purpose? You're also a senator from the state of Alabama. God help the people there. Are you saying the state of Alabama needs more kids? Why does the state of Alabama need more kids? More kids for what? There was a time when the state of Alabama absolutely needed more kids because, you know, Alabama was a slave state. And the mandate of the planter class in Alabama was for black women to produce more kids because those kids were property and they could work more kids and make more money on their plantations. Are you saying the state of Alabama needs more kids because you think that those populations will include people who are maybe destitute and desperate enough if you kick out the immigrants like a lot of y'all want to do and you could make them do the work that the migrants are doing now? Does that kind of sound slavery-ish? Is the state of Alabama the we? And is, is, is that the why? I mean, you're also a white guy. Are you saying the we is white folks need more kids? Is this like a great replacement thing where you're concerned that there's not enough white people in the population versus the growth of the Latino population, the black population, the Asian American population? And so the we is white people need to make white women have more kids and that's the we and that's the why because it's a little creepy. A little handmaid's tale, don't you think? In championing the significance of individual autonomy, there arises a probing inquiry into whether governmental bodies or specific factions are dictating or endorsing an upsurge in childbirth. This underscores the essence of individual freedom, the ability to chart one's course amid minimal government intrusion and strategic family planning. The onus lies with each individual to navigate choices regarding family size, factoring in personal values, economic landscapes, and lifestyle predilections. This translates into a call for a nuanced exploration of population dynamics, steering clear of censuring Joy Reid's depiction of Senator Tuberville's statements, expressing reservations about the politicization of the matter, and avoiding the inclination to ascribe negative motives to individuals or political entities. Crucially, we must sidestep presumptions about underlying motives fostering an environment conducive to open dialogue and embracing diverse perspectives on topics like population growth. On a psychological plane, a toxic undercurrent surfaces in societal and governmental attitudes toward masculinity. As political feminism gains ascendancy, a phenomenon of social castration emerges, targeting men. The pinnacle objective for men revolves around safeguarding their families a quintessential facet of masculinity. However, when this objective wanes, an existential unraveling ensues. Moreover, the decision to expand one's family is entangled with individual responsibilities and economic considerations. The notion of birthing additional children becomes a multifaceted choice entwined with personal and familial complexities. Pivots towards championing individual freedom to carve meaningful life choices recognizing the myriad reasons that steer individuals towards embracing or eschewing parenthood. Critically, scrutinizing Joy Reid's historical analogy, linking the imperative for increased childbirth during slavery, prompts concern regarding the appropriateness of such parallels. Engaging in an accurate and sensitive discourse on historical matters is paramount. Yet, confronting contemporary society about slavery devoid of lived experiences and the associated trauma, risks distorting historical truths. Prudent counsel dictates steering clear of sweeping comparisons that oversimplify the intricate tapestry of historical realities.